All right, looks like we have another extension on the foreclosure moratorium and an extension on the eviction moratorium for renters slash tenants. We'll see how this plays out. Welcome to Housing Bubble 2.0 News of the Week, or as I like to call it, another episode of As the Housing Market Turns. Today is the 25th of June. The month is almost over. Obviously, everybody was waiting to see what was going to happen. Uh, with respect to this type of information and what was going to what was going to occur with tenants moratoria the whole bit so it doesn't i guess you could say it doesn't disappoint like always uh randy patrick here putting the realism back in real estate hope everyone's doing well this is the news of the day and we're going to get into it and discuss how this is going to play out how it's going to affect people uh, you know, with their lives with respect to housing. Uh, but first of all, if you've not checked out my five video playlist on the top 10 reasons why we will have another housing crash and crisis, you should do so. You can find it here on the channel. It's in a playlist. There's five videos. I go from reasons 10 uh, descending down to reason number one, and you can check that out. Also, I have an accompanying document. It's the top 10 reasons why we will have another housing crash and crisis. Go to housingbubble2.com, put in your email, you can download that document for free. So there you go. All right, so obviously, if you look at the news information that's on the internet today, the first thing you see really is, when it comes to real estate, is the Fed's grant extension on foreclosure and REO moratoria. So that basically has come up, and, and you know, so this is the Fed, and this is foreclosure. So basically, the FH, FHFA foreclosure moratorium uh, which really is uh, applies to single family mortgages backed by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, basically um, have been I guess you could say the moratorium was over uh, on the 30th of June that's now been extended to July 31st and this is intended to be the final extension of the moratorium so I know a lot of people were sort of contemplating this or wondering how far this is going to go how much longer you know we're going to extend this out like you know the can the proverbial cans being kicked down the road for how long now well looks like this is it so we're talking on the foreclosure side REO eviction moratoria you got one more month so to me this actually is a um, it's a positive sign so they they did it because I think that you know it's just so what they do, they want to show people that you know they're they're thinking of them. Uh, but this is on the Fed side. So now, after July 31st, FHA or you know government-backed mortgages that have been you know we're facing a foreclosure sale date are going to get those dates reset. Those that were in process are going to start to get processed again. That were in process, and those that may basically were ready to go into the foreclosure bucket and start the processing, those are going to start up again as well too. So we see this is all starting to happen right now, and it's and it's and it's really you know. Almost like we're waiting for the summer selling season to be over, and once the fall hits, you know everything's going to start to pick up. So this is indeed interesting, uh, and hopefully it'll, it'll eventually bring you know opportunity down the road. Now, um, on top of that, the CDC extended the national eviction ban through July, and ultimately, now we're going to see lots of headlines here. What does this mean for renters? Well, basically, it was supposed to end June thirtieth. Renters get one more you know opportunity to to not pay rent or and not get evicted. Uh, that's the whole deal here. Uh, basically, again, the CDC saying the same thing, saying it's the last time that they're going to do this, which basically means, you know, once July 31st hits again, things are going to be wide open for landlords to pursue evictions. Now, just so you know, in some of this information, um, it, it means that you can't be evicted. So, in other words, you can't actually, I guess you could say, um, you know, actually lose the eviction case and be forced out of your home until after July 31st. What this means, though, is that uh, if you're a landlord, you can start to process your eviction. So the courts will take the evictions and start to process them. They won't actually just act on the very last stage of the eviction, which basically is awarding judgment, giving a writ of possession, and then actually, you know, you going through the process of actually getting, you know, local county sheriff or law enforcement, whatever, to actually physically, you know, remove them from the property. So that's, they're not going down, like, like that's really the ban. You can't force people out, but, you know, right now landlords can pursue the eviction process and get things kind of lined up. So really, you know, this is what's happening in the, in the world now. We're not in a situation where we have poor weather. It's December, January, the cold. It, it's, you know, we've got how many millions of people are vaccinated now. Uh, the states are opening up. The economy is doing better. Uh, jobs are coming back, apparently. So, you know, this is the situation we're in. Um, you know, 
but, but still, landlord groups are, you know, but says here, but landlords who've opposed the moratorium and challenged it in court uh, were against any extensions, which, you know, okay, we understand that. Uh, they have argued the focus should be on speeding up the distribution of rental assistance. So we're going to talk about it in a second. And this lies, herein lies the main problem right now. So, you know, it's easy just to extend the eviction moratorium to appease a certain population segment and talk about public safety, health concerns, whatever, which I get, and I'm not debating that or saying that's a bad thing. But on the other hand, where's the help for all these people? And that is really what is, I think, a main focus uh, or, or lack of main focus right now in the real estate community. So, uh, by the way, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, if you could please help my channel grow and smash that subscribe button, I'd appreciate that. And secondly, if you think you're a subscriber, if you could just resubscribe, do me that favor because I've been you know, losing subscribers, heading out uh, every day losing as opposed to gaining. So if you could do that, that, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you very much. All right, let's keep going on here. So ultimately, in the end, um, you know, um, you know, this is all the headlines. White House authorizes final one-month ex extension of the eviction moratorium. So I guess the main, I guess, stress point or talking point we're, we're, we're focusing on here is final. This is the last time, all right? So ultimately what this means is that um, I guess you could say the people who have the money for rental assistance should be doling the money out and therefore tenants and landlords shouldn't have to worry about you know any more eviction moratoriums that's what should be happening how that's going to play out i don't know but again this is every pretty much every um situation we're going to talk you know we're going to see here um now there's also more discussions on a new round of distressed mortgage relief so what's going to happen afterwards so you know once the foreclosure evictions actually or moratoriums actually stop um now in theory forbearance is sort of you know p paralleling that time frame as well too a lot of forbearance plans are ending uh after june 30th and will start ending in july and going forward so it's kind of like everything is coming to that you know head right now that kind of peak of chaos that we're going to experience uh, you know down the road um ultimately you know what we're going to see is that you know the government's you know okay if there's no more eviction moratoriums and foreclosure moratoriums then they're going to have to figure something out with respect to what you know what are they going to offer if anything to people who are still behind in their in their mortgage payments so it's just one more thing that we're going to deal with down the road but at least we can see that these moratoriums are actually having some finality which i think is important um, so uh, again if you haven't been in a for forbearance program and you need it you better get on now because you have a, a finite time frame where you can you know so i guess you say jump into forbearance because everything is kind of ending now and i believe that it says um the, the announcement recently reaffirmed that consumers with government loans may request forbearance on their payments through september 30th um so that so there you go so um you kind of got a, a time frame that you can do this and, and if you don't do it you're going to be out of luck so that's a scoop on that but how does this affect the marketplace well um oh, again one more i just basically you know sh showing you everything that you see out there so this really is dominating the news as of late yesterday and today so just if you want to check it out it's all there now this is what's in interesting now so um this is what i wanted to get into and talk about here is that this is a great article and there's a couple of these out now with respect to um in california because obviously california is a very large state uh, a lot of people uh, a lot of you know more expensive with respect to property values and rents and whatever so um basically some california landlords are pleading with the state and local governments to end the eviction moratorium on rental properties is planned June 30th rather than extending it. Uh, ultimately, the, the concept is they're saying is that, you know, the renters, the tenants are stealing from apartment owners and it's legal. So you've got groups of people who, rightly so, and this is the thing, this is a very polarizing argument and I get that and I want to be clear here that, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle because I can see, you know, you have to have some protection that's needed for tenants for various reasons and I get that. On the other hand, you've got a whole market segment of many, many people, millions of people with millions of homes. These are the mom pod landlords that are getting killed by this, all right? And when you start reading behind the, sort of looking behind the scenes, reading between the lines, there's more going on be, you know, behind the scenes that would cause one to think that there's a big concern here and something else is, is happening at the same time. So, but this is interesting because ultimately, in the end, what they're saying, and this is true, is that, you know, um, ultimately, if the big owners, you know, if you're in a multi-unit complex of 200 people, well, when you have a certain percentage of people that aren't paying, um, that loss can be, you know, is, is felt a little less 
distributed over over a greater number of units. So basically, you know, the big owners have big buildings, they have enough units to spread it out, and they can stay in the business. But it's the older couple who owns a duplex or triplex, they save their money to buy it, and we're counting on being the retirement, and then the tenants don't have to pay. And that's becoming a big issue for a lot of the smaller landlords. It's becoming a major issue. Um, interesting enough, though, when we're focusing on California, so Governor Newsom announced a plan to repay property owners 100% of rent owned from tenants that qualify for rental assistance due to COVID-19. But more than a month later, um, that money hasn't arrived, okay? And ultimately, what we're seeing now is that, so now now we've just had another, so it was set to expire, and this, you know, this obviously was a, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago article, and, you know, so now that we know that June 30th is not going to happen, it's going to July 31st, okay, what are we going to do here? Well, other, you know, and this is the difference, though. So you got San Francisco Board of Supervisors extended the city and counties a moratorium on evictions until September, okay, and San Diego County Board uh, basically um, is, looks like it's, you know, um, uh, is voted in favor of rent control regulations, the prohibition of evictions for all rental units beginning June 3rd, lasting for 60 days. So ultimately, you know, they were kind of, I guess, I guess already tied into the end of July. Uh, but but ultimately, in the end, what they're saying is that, um, you know, the landlords are kind of going, I, I beg you to please, you know, end the moratorium. It's killing us, right? And this has to end, which I fully get in this situation. Like, it's ridiculous. Let's go even deeper now, all right? So basically, with uh, the, the California Governor Newsom, basically, um, his, you know, I guess you could say position is I'm going to make landlords whole. Well, basically, when you look at this, it says the state will make landlords whole whose tenants have accumulated past due rent amid the pandemic. Despite the fact that the state has only distributed just $32 million of the $490 million in requests for rental assistance through May 31st in what appears to be a typical bureaucratic malarkey. So this is exactly the situation here. So you've got you know this money that's you know from the CARES Act or stimulus or whatever whatever the money that was allocated for rental assistance has been given to the states, all right? And how the state deploys that money is really up to who knows, right? Like I, mean, I don't I can't tell you state by state how this is being done. You'd have to inquire on your own state, your own county, your own city. Here. Um, the whole point, though, is that this is going to cause chaos. So, every, you know, so once again, you have a, a moratorium that's being extended, and there's a promise of money saying it's coming, but there's no way to get at the money. So, obviously, you know, 32 million out of 490. Well, that's basically what? That's less than 10 percent, and you know what I mean. So, we're just talking probably six, you know, probably six or seven percent. If I'm doing some quick math, you know, in public here, which I don't like to do, um, you know, probably six or seven percent of essentially money ha has gone to, um, you know, has actually hit the right people. That's ridiculous when there's so much coming this way, and and that's the concern for people. I think it's a broader concern that we all should have because of how it's going to play out. And and this really boils down to, I think, the crux of it all. Uh, let's get to the next slide here. So this is what to me is is important. It says. Um, California has $5.2 billion to pay off people's rent, money from multiple aid packages approved by Congress. That appears to be more than enough to cover all the unpaid rent in the state, according to this person, the counselor to Newsom on the housing and the homelessness uh, guy here. So ultimately, in the end, the reason why you know California wants to or is pro, let's you know, extend the eviction moratorium uh, on tenants farther because what they want to do is is now go now we can essentially distribute the rent and you know but you know that's just one more month you know of pain and suffering for landlords and other people uh and will that you know with will 30 days make a difference I mean, if they've only distributed you know six or seven percent of the total they you know that's been applied for that's number one two they've been um they have 5.2 billion so if you think about that let's actually step back a bit here so you know, four four hundred ninety million has been applied for. So four hundred ninety million out of five point two billion looks to be about what? Um, oh, I don't know. Probably ten percent, less than ten percent. So less than ten percent of the money allocated for California rental assistance has been applied for. And out of that, out of that ten per less than ten percent that's that's been applied for, six or seven percent of that is actually been distributed. So you know, if you actually look, so what's thirty two million dollars into five point two billion? It's less than a percent. So this is where, you know, when I look at this, I go, there is no hope here. 
And you know, this is just going to be. This is going to go on. It's going to be a big mess. Um, that's what we deal with here. And you know, ultimately, in the end, as you know, what I've said over and over again, a certain market segment, the mom pod landlords, basically, um, you know, are, are going to end up holding the bag for this. And um, you know, when you start looking at some of the numbers here, uh, it really is kind of you know, it, it's kind of um, it's scary, is what it is. And you know, basically, that's why landlords have been putting you know and pushing the state to end this. Uh, pointing to the state's, you know, rapid economic recovery for the pandemic, new jobs added, you know, the whole bit. So, you know, it's it's like it doesn't make sense. So why do they, why do we keep extending this? Um, you know, what's the purpose here? You know, are that many people going to be homeless? We don't know. Why is the money there? It's not going out. It just seems to be we're going in circles and circles and circles. So, you know, who are we appeasing here? You know, what's the end game? I, I really don't know. So there is confusion. Uh, and really, it boils down to difficulty on, on a lot of fronts here. So I know I'm not making a heck of a lot of sense here, but this is what I'm seeing here. So billions, five point. And this is again, this is not just, you know, I'm talking. This we're just talking California here as, a, as an example here. Five point two billion for California. Well, billions have been allocated for rental assistance across the country. Now, the problem though is that how it is, how you can go about getting it could be different from state to state, from county and by city. And what I mean by that is, number one, do you even know how to get it? If you're a landlord, do you have any idea how to get it? Quite frankly, I wasn't aware of it until I actually got a um, an e-blast that came from my local real estate realtor association saying, oh, we're going to have, you know, here's here's a link to um, a Florida-based you know, solution provider uh, for rental assistance, okay? so But the problem is when you start investigating some of this stuff, there's specific terms and conditions. So a landlord cannot get that money, number one, unless they ad adhere to specific terms and conditions. And that and those terms and conditions are really designed for the landlord. So I look, and and they're not always the best terms and conditions. So, you know, one of because I've had firsthand experience doing that, doing this for some of my clients. And some of the, the main issue is that if you get back rent paid, you can't evict them for a year going forward. That's kind of a common theme from what I've seen here and what I've heard. So it's one of those things that, hey, I'm going to get some money uh, from the government, which is great, and I'll maybe I'll get caught up. But what's happening on a going forward basis? Is there money that's going to come on a going forward basis as part of this program? Or do I have to wait yet another six months before I have to reapply again? And, and can my tenant do the same thing? Okay, you've got your... Okay, you've got your back payment. I'm whole now. As a tenant, you can't, you know, you agreed not to, by getting accepting the money, you agreed not to pursue a further um, eviction on me. And I can stay there for, for six months, another year. Could I? Not paying the rent. So it's it really is, it's a short-term term thing. Now, again, I don't know, again, there could be hundreds of these programs out there. That's just an example. I also look at it going, what's in it for the tenant? Because it's clear that if you start looking at some of this information, um, what we're hearing now from a lot of landlords is a lot of tenants are saying, well, I'm just not paying you because I'm allowed to. My government says I, I don't have to, and I'm I'm not gonna, you know, I'm gonna I'm saving up for a house. So we know down well that when eventually you can start to evict, they're just gonna leave anyway. You see, and, and here's something I've learned as well too. I'll give you my client's example. Well, first of all, it's not too effective. So I actually, you know, went on to apply on their behalf through one of the Florida programs, and it was kind of, you know, it wasn't very clear. Um, it's a website, a call center. It, you know, it takes. A long time for approval, six to eight weeks for approval. Um, there's no guarantee. So, in other words, they, they state that you know we'll review the situation to determine how much you're going to get. So, you, as a landlord, you're not. You, there's number one, no guarantee you're going to get money. Number one, N number two, no guarantee you're going to get the full amount that's owed to you. There you go. And and, and there's also some things too that um, if the tenant has left. So, in other words, if you have a tenant who hasn't paid you for 12 months and has, and has, has taken off. Guess what? Because they're not an active tenant anymore in your property, you can't go back and get that money. So, in other words, you can't apply. This is, again, this is the Florida here where I'm talking about. So, you can't apply from this program and say, well, my tenant, you know, burned me for 12 months and, and I would like to get the money back from this program. And they're going to say, well, no, it's only for people who are currently living in your rental accommodation. So, basically, a lot of this, a lot of this allocated money is not going to be able to, to be... I guess distributed to a lot of landlords because of circumstances, right? So, again, when I call for updates, we don't know. Um, it, it's it's just more of an archaic system. It's kind of like a, not a great website. Call center people. Um, no offense to the call center people that I've I've dealt with, but they don't really seem to know what's going on. I think I've talked to about nine or ten people. Only one lady was actually knowledgeable on the situation and could provide me the, the appropriate information. 
Uh, but there really is like, it's, it's like, you know, they'll get to it and they'll let you know. All right. Oh, we don't know yet. So some, somebody, so there's an onboarding process. Uh, there's a call center, but then they have to reach out to you to say, okay, this next step, you know, we've approved you step by step. Go to the next step, please. So um, part of my issue too is that what's in it for the tenant is that the tenant's not receiving money here. And some of these programs require, like you as a landlord have to implement, you know, put all your information in. And then the next step is for the tenant to actually participate. So if the tenant doesn't participate, that either slows down your process and you have to work around that, or they, or maybe it doesn't give you any 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 money down the road. You see, so who knows what's going to happen here? So my my point though is that you know is this part of the great wealth transfer plot? I really do think it is, because this has been tar This is a segment that's been targeted uh, specifically, um, and are paying the price here. Um, we've got typical bureaucratic issues on the deployment of the money and hoops to jump through, which really isn't fair. It's causing a lot of chaos, and I think there'd be a lot more happier people, both from a tenant and a landlord perspective, uh, if money was flowing and a little easier to get your hands on. Now, I agree, with any situation like this, there's always the opportunity, um, you know, obviously the opportunity to people running little scams and shenanigans, whatever, so like anything that always goes on, but if you take a look at it, um, you know, just, just using, for example, the California uh, example, the amount of money that was distributed is is nothing, you know, compared to what's out there. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be too worried about that. But I guess my next question too is, what happens to the surplus funds? So, you know, you can see that if you know, for example, in California, we've got five point two billion dollars, but you know, we're probably you know we we're I can tell you they're not going to distribute five point two billion dollars. So it's going to be surplus. Who gets the surplus? Does the surplus go back to the government, or does California just get to keep it? Do each does each state get to keep it? And then do what they want with it. So you know, I know that there's a lot of discussion on you know certain states getting bailouts and, and money, etc. So I don't you know I don't know how that's going to cloud some of the issues here. But I can pretty much tell you that you know uh, the money that's allocated is not going to be used 100. percent So just because of the terms and conditions, the longer it takes, um, you know, and now for example, you know, when certain markets here that are opening up, um, some evictions are already happening. So if you've had to evict your um, your tenant because you had no other choice, you're not going to get that money that's owed, the background that's owed to you. So there's, there's again, terms and conditions that we don't know about for all these locations. My point is that uh, in the end, it's not going to be the savior that it was designed to be. And that to me is, is the, the most problematic part of all of this. So in summary, what do we got? Extra 30 days for FHA um, uh, foreclosure and REO eviction moratorium. Uh, apparently it's going to be the last time this is going to happen. So expectation is after July 31st, we're going to see some additional movement on um, you know, foreclosure processing, uh, auction sale dates, foreclosure processing, foreclosure starts. Some states have already started that process right now. That's already increasing. So that's happening right now, guys. Okay, that's happening right now. And with respect to this moratorium uh, for uh, on, the, on the eviction from the renter side, uh, same thing. One more month. Apparently, it's the last play on this. And we'll see the court system start to get busy um, after July 31st. We'll probably get start getting busy now anyway for all the filings uh, that'll start uh, if, if landlords can't get their money uh, through any sort of program. And then after July 31st, I'm sure the court systems are going to be inundated. Which you know, when I talk about some uh, some previous videos about court, you know, the, the Florida Supreme Court, for example, basically wanting to streamline and moving cases along as fast as possible. These are the reasons why, because they know the volume's coming. So uh, again, this is part of the part of the. <laughs> the, the fun, I suppose. So, by the way, um, if you're looking for stuff to do, Florida is a place to buy, live, and invest. You can see that a lot of single-family um, rental homes are here in the state of Florida. We are a growing state. Why do you want to do that? Well, you know why? It's nice and warm down here. We don't have any state tax. Uh, lots of fun. Uh, water sports the whole bit. And by the way, Opportunity Knocks right now. I've got off-market uh, rental duplex in Tampa available. Off-market two units in St. Pete's that's for rent. Rental is just great. We got a small multifamily, four plus units uh, with great cash flow. We're getting more deals every day. Please reach out to me for more information on these properties. We can get you engaged with those right now. Um, how much distress volume is there? Well, you know that's going to be part of the the ongoing calculations. I look at it going. We're probably going to you know have between minimum four million foreclosures, maximum eleven million. Kind of low end of what people are saying versus the high end. We're probably going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, this is what Wall Street's waiting for. We have to get ahead of the game. Uh, there'll be headwinds on this. 
And this is where the ultimate opportunity is to buy distressed cheaper properties here. Take a look at the reason why we do this because in the my Tampa, St. Petersburg, Clearwater, MSA, the difference between a median sales price from a retail property to a short sell property is about 70K right now. It changes month to month, but typically we're seeing, we're not seeing 10,000, 20,000, we're seeing north of 50, 60,000 minimum every month depending on the type of closings. And by the way, there's not many closings with short sale scenarios because there's not much out there because no one's doing the business. So that is should be a hint to you guys to get involved with this. Can I help you with it? Of course I can. That's part of the play is that I do have education and training, coaching, mentoring products, um, joint venture products with respect to short sales, which is this is the, the best one right here, and an entry level one, which I call uh, the zombie foreclosure flip, which gives you all the information about the stressed housing and buying things cheaper. So two things to choose from. I will tell you how to engage a stressed housing market. Just connect with me, send me an email, give me your contact information. We can go from there. So having said that, thank you once again uh, for the views, likes, comments. Oh, go to gethousingdata.com why it's the number one location to find distressed property listings. You can check out what's going on in your backyard with respect to pre-foreclosures, foreclosure auctions, tax deed auctions, probates, other distressed property. It shows you what's going on and you can see the level of distress and figure out how you want to approach the marketplace. So get housingdata.com. It's my partnership with foreclosure.com. So again, having said all that, um, once again, have a great weekend. Thanks for views, likes, likes, comments. Please share the video with your family and friends. If you're not a subscriber, please smash the subscribe button and look forward to catching up with people over the weekend and getting stuff done. So have a great weekend, everybody. See you later.